Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to continue with the Galatians run through and on chapter two. And there's a lot here. And um, I remember, I remember this is a famous chapter here. And it's been a while since I've actually sat down and read through the scriptures, so I kind of forgot where some of these things are. But you know, this is one that's talked about a lot. So, anyways, let's continue. Paul accepted by the apostles, verses 1 through 10. So he's continuing here kind of with his testimony from chapter 1. Then 14, about how, you know, he was called by God and um, to be an apostle. And, you know, his conversion and everything, what happened after his conversion. Then 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So he went up by revelation, uh, I guess, by what the Lord had revealed to him, uh, where to go and preach the gospel. And he said he did it privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. And, you know, it's been a while since I thought about that verse. And so that's something that I want to look into more on this one. What does he mean that he said it to the, he spoke the gospel to those with reputation in private, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Hmm. Interesting. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. I know some people might watch this and be like, what are these videos? You're just reading through the scriptures and you're just, you know, saying interesting and you don't know these things. And I'm just sharing with you my thoughts, you know, as I'm reading. Um, and giving insight to what I can and, and sharing with you things that I have questions about, you know. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this is why I'm working on, this is why I'm trying to work on, you know, a commentary throughout the scriptures, constructing what I think is the best interpretation. So then I have a reference to go to and a reference I can give other people to go to, you know, that's at least, you know, a good solid start of, you know, some ideas of what these verses are probably speaking of. And so this is kind of like the process of, you know, how I would go through them. You know, I read through the scriptures and get an idea, you know, of what's being said in these chapters and stuff, and then go through verse by verse and try to understand in detail. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Uh, and that because of false brethren and wares brought in, we came in privily to spy out the liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they may bring us into bondage. So he was saying someone, he was saying Titus, uh, who was with him, and is that the same Titus that he writes to in, in, you know, in Titus, the epistle? I guess so. Um, he was compelled to be circumcised. So someone was telling him that, you know, he needs to be circumcised like the Jews were, um, to be pleasing to God, and which you know isn't true. It's not necessary because there's liberty in Christ. Now they may bring us into bondage to put them back under the law. So Galatians two five: To whom we have place by subjection, or we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So he's saying, you know, we didn't put up with this stuff, you know, at all. We gave them no place, basically, uh, after learning of this. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. 
for they seem to be somewhat in conference in conference added nothing to me hmm so but of these who seem to be somewhat so does that mean um, men who thought that they were high up you know as far as um, they're highly regarded by other men or something or they thought you know they thought there was something special they were self-righteous and prideful is that what it's speaking of for they seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me but contrawise, when they saw the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to, unto me, the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So basically saying that Paul was to preach to the Jews and he was to preach to the Gentiles. Um, And so sometimes the circumcision, you know, Paul says we are the circumcision, speaking of the true circumcision of the church. Sometimes it's used, it's spoken of as, you know, uh, by nature of the Jews. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I was also forward to do. I was also forward to do. Remember the poor. It speaks of them being pillars. I see that language of like pillars of the faith or of the church when they perceived the grace that was given unto him the grace of God to to be an apostle to the Gentiles um, so it's very interesting and he adds that we should remember the poor Paul opposes Peter Galatians chapter 11, or verse 11 through 14. And this is, uh, you know, well, this onward, I think, really makes this chapter, this is what people would talk about the most from this chapter. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So uh, when someone's wrong, you know, Paul took it to him and... Uh, For before the certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing the, them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch as Barnabas was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? And so I think that's kind of what this whole epistle is about. Maybe when he's talking about people are being led astray by another gospel, he's saying that you know they are being persuaded to um, adhere to the laws of the Jews, and. Um, you know, that gets, you know, I see a lot of the stuff about Lordship Salvation and this and that and the other recently, and it's always a hot topic and it's stuff that I've talked about, and I'm going to do more on, obviously, but, you know, when the Bible speaks about salvation being by faith and not by works, I think that the context is always talking about, like, the Jewish laws and traditions, because, you know, that's the context of the scriptures that, you know, we're not saved by, you know, those by following those Jewish traditions and um, 
that's what's being talked about a lot here. That um, you know, people are being persuaded to be circumcised. You know, that's a work. Okay, that they were you know being forbidden to eat you know certain meats and whatever else. Those are works. Those are works of the law. Okay, and so that's the false gospel that that Paul's talking about here. And um, so he thought that I guess Peter was. Um, <clears throat> was kind of leading people astray, I guess, in this manner. And, you know, it also shows that, you know, Peter, you know, I did my study about how the Roman Church says that Peter was the first pope and that he is, you know, basically, like, blameless and everything or whatever. Or that he's infallible, you know, in his doctrines and, and faith or whatever. And, you know, this verse is something that refutes that because he was wrong, obviously, and Paul rebuked him, and, you know, it shows that even the apostles, you know, made mistakes, and, um, you know, it's also a good verse to show that, you know, defending the faith also. So there's a lot there, but let's just continue with the justified by faith part, Galatians 2, 15 through 21. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. We are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Um, so, and it's interesting that he equates the Gentiles with sinners. So, it's basically saying like the Jews were supposed to be the holy people and the Gentiles were supposed to be like the heathen, like you know the, the pagan idol worshippers, and the Jews were supposed to be following the one true God. Knowing that man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. And so we see there, see, not being justified by the works of the law. And so, you know, it just, one second. Um, the whole lordship salvation thing and everything. If you say that, you know, you need to, um, you know, confess that Jesus is Lord, or you need to submit to Jesus as Lord, or you need to repent of your sins, or whatever, and people take a dislike to those terms being used for salvation, and they want to label it as works salvation. When they're not really using it in the same way that scripture did because works are talking about works of the law of the Jewish traditions and laws okay that's the specific context of what it's being used of so um, you know and then there's people that even say that if you pray for salvation or something that that's a work and that's just insane you know it's that's not what it's speaking of at all, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's talking about the Jewish traditions, and um, so a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, ever. And you know, there's this dispensational people who will teach that salvation was different at different times, that people were actually saved by works in the Old Testament, and that's completely false. No flesh shall be justified by the works of the law, ever. The scripture says that many times. That salvation always has been by faith alone. But if, while we speak to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. That's an interesting verse. Um, 
that I don't really want to say a lot about it. I want to look into that more again. But if we'll, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners. And I can see that somebody would try to teach that salvation is a, you know, a process uh, by trying to use, use this verse, you know, while we seek to be justified, saying that, you know, we need to continually live sinless day by day to, re, to, to, a, you know, to, um, to keep our salvation, basically. And that's not what this means, but as I said, I'd like to, this is something in the expository that, you know, I, I could explain better after doing some more research. Hmm. So without wasting a whole lot of time on that, I'll just move forward. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So I think actually reading on now, this verse kind of, verse 18 explains verse 17 more. So he's saying, you know, if we ourselves are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin. And so he's talking about, then he goes on to explain that if I build the things again which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So he's saying like, you know, and he says in Romans and stuff about how the law condemns, you know, um, the spirit saves. And so, you know, if he's saying that we're justified by the works of the law after he's already believed and, and preached that we're justified by faith, then he's putting himself back underneath the law. And, uh, basically condemning himself again. And it's interesting, he uses that phrase, God forbid, a lot. And again, you know, he says, is therefore Christ the master of sin? He's not really wanting an answer to this question. And the fact, and the, you know, and the idea that he doesn't know, he's making a statement. But I want to continue on. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Through the law and dead to the law. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me I gave his, and gave himself for me. So this is speaking of his identity in Christ. That's a great verse to memorize. I used to have that memorized. I remember, you know, one of my old pastors uh, had a handful of verses to give me on flashcards to memorize and stuff. And this was from Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So there's a lot there about, you know, recognizing who we are in Christ. And again, Christ gave himself for us. Uh, and also it mentions Christ being the Son of God, which speaks of his deity, because uh, he has the same nature as God, the Father. And uh, salvation is by faith. And so there's a whole lot of doctrines in there, but that's just a, a great verse. Final verse, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So, so again, when we're talking about work salvation, we're talking about the law of the Old Testament of the Jews. So, that's it, Galatians chapter 2. Thanks for watching. I'd like to know what you think about this stuff. Leave comments. God bless.